Hi everyone and welcome to episode 3 in our Santa Claus Saving Christmas game tutorial series. If you don't know what this is about, on Christmas I released a, a game, uh, just a very quick game that I made uh, shortly before Christmas break and it's a little platformer game with Santa Claus and I thought I'd make a series about how I made it and so you can follow along and make your own one too. If you want to download and play the game right now, you can find a link in the description below, plus all the assets you require for this project as well, where you can download them too. Okay, so where we left off last time was we added uh, our player character to the, to the game, and we added controls to jump and animations to match. So we've got running, idle, and I've got a walk as well. So here I'm, I'm using the controller here so you can see the walk work when I'm only slightly pushing on a stick. And I can then obviously jump to my heart's content. Okay, so that's animation for the movement. What we're going to work on today is the animation and action of throwing snowballs. So the main attack for our um, uh, Santa Claus is throwing snowballs. So to do this, we need to set up, first of all, the animation and inputs for this. So I'm going to go to Edit and Project Settings and set up the input with the menu on the left and we're going to set up an action mapping for throw snowball or let's do attack let's do attack that's better so attack and attack is going to be the left mouse button and it's also going to be the gamepad face button uh, right we'll do Actually, uh, right or left, like X or B. Let's go for uh, the left one. We can change this obviously as we play test it later on. So once we've got that, we're going to go into adding a attack animation. So we've got an attack animation here with our throw, like so. Okay. Now the way this is going to work is that we need to make it blend between the bones, so the running animation can happen still underneath the the rest of it so the top half can do the throwing animation and the legs can carry on running if it is in fact running so to do this we need to make this a montage so right click on your throw object animation and go create and create an in montage with it open we can now set up a few things here so to do this we need to set up a new slot so slots work in a way like sort of channels. So the default group slot is a default channel where animation is played. However, we can add multiple slots to this so we can then blend between different things. So to make a new slot, we need to see the slot window. So go to window and you'll see uh, slot manager. And in there, we can add a new slot and call it um, top body. Okay, because it's going to be a channel for the top half of the body. So in there, go back to my asset browser, or you actually can stay on this one. We're going to change in the middle here the montage to use the top body one. And we take it to stop, re reset, just delete what's currently there because we need to add it again to it. So on the asset browser, drag your throw object into the montage here. And that's all we need to really do on a montage in this case. So you can test it out by playing it. You see the whole animation being played out. So save and close that. So now we've got this animation, we can now blend this into the animation blueprint. So on center animation, go back, back to here. Now currently the movement has been the only thing that's plugged into our result. So what we need to do is first of all, cache this. So do a cache and save it as a cached pose. I'm going to save this as movement cache. So that animation is being stored in this cache here, wherever it may be. So to call that cache up, we need to just copy paste, uh, not paste, sorry, uh, not copy paste, just get movement cache here. There we go. Use cached movement pose. And we're going to do a slot on here. So get slot. And with it selected, you can choose what slot you want it to go into. So we're going to send the animation through the top body slot. And then from there, we're going to blend by bone. Uh, no, 
blend bone. No, that's not right. Blend bone. Layered. That's it. Layered blend both bone. That's it. So the new blend pose. This one here. This is going to be the think about slot as that. That's the montage being played. So this will be going into the blend pose zero. The base pose is going to come from this cache here. So I can just copy paste that in again and plug another one into base pose. Now I can choose which bone I want to blend it with. So with it selected, you can see up here, I can choose on the layer which bone I want to use. Now to do this, we need to look at our skeleton. Now our skeleton is quite simple in this case. I'm just going to change so I can actually see the whole skeleton. But with that there, I can now choose which area I want to start blending. Now, wherever, whichever bone you choose, it's going to then uh, blend everything connected to it. So, for example, if I choose spine one, it will select all of that from spine one to right hand. So it won't affect the legs or anything like that. So spine one sounds like a good choice for us. Now, it has to be spelled exactly the same. So capital S and the one with no space. So back on my blueprint, click on layer blend per bone. And where it says layer setup, add a new one with the plus symbol. And the bone name is going to be spine one. And this now can be blended into out, output pose. And click compile. So now we've got the montage blending with the movement. We are then going to need to call that montage. So on the Santo object, we'll do the attack event we made at the start. And when it's pressed, we're going to play montage and we can choose uh, play and in montage if you like um, or we can choose actually let's choose the other one let's do play montage but it gives you lots more cool stuff you can work with so the skeletal mesh we need to use is this mesh here plug that in and the montage we want to play is a throw object montage click compile and let's test this out and now I have it, there's a throw. And I can run and throw at the same time. I can also jump and throw at the same time. And there you have it. And if I go to my controller, I can jump and I can throw with my X button. I'm using the Xbox controller, so X is the gamepad left. Cool. So we've got the animation working in, we've got the inputs working in. What we're going to do in the next episode is add the snowballs so we can actually throw and release them out as projectiles. So join us in the next part where we start creating the projectiles for the snowballs. If you want to see that next part right now, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey where you can go and watch that next episode plus the rest of this series before anyone else right now. Don't forget to subscribe so you can catch future episodes and a big thank you to all my patrons for their support for the previous year and going forward into 2020. We've got loads of exciting stuff coming out and I can't wait to show you all. Thanks again and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.